So everybody's talking about AI and the AI bash gets slapped on everything. We mean laptops to even mice and, you know, power supplies. What the heck is a power supply got to do with AI? But what we haven't checked out is a video editing AI features and how good are these GPUs. We've got Nvidia, we've got AMD. AMD has been the winner in DaVinci Resolve on my benchmark so far, but there is now new benchmarks available where we can actually put AI features and some of the more, you know, realistic workflows head to head between Nvidia, AMD and Intel. So which one is better for DaVinci Resolve? So if you're using DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna love this information here. This video has been brought to you by Samsung and their NVMe SSDs. The 990 Pro is one of the best NVMe's we have tested on the channel. Have a look at any of the recent SSD reviews and you'll see for yourself. And if you wanna know how to use these guys on your Mac, then I'll leave the video down in the description below. So if you want to check out the full article, I'm going to leave it in the description below, but we're going to be going through and analyzing here what's going on then. So firstly, the test bench setup that Puget Bench actually used, or Puget System, sorry, used for this is with a Threadripper system with 128 gigabytes of DDR5. It's all on the article there as well, but basically to actually remove the CPU bottleneck as much as possible. And then we're going to look at different aspects of the benchmark. Firstly, we're going to be looking at the overall score first. Puget Bench for DaVinci Resolve 1.0. And if you haven't checked out their Puget Bench for creators, they have now available benchmark for DaVinci Resolve as well, which is really nice all in one benchmark. They're very easy to do, but the previous scores aren't relatable now to the new one. So just so you know. Bear in mind the DaVinci Resolve here is 18.6.6, .6, even though there is a Resolve 19 beta version available, but the beta versions can, the performance can go all over. So that's why they're doing with 18.6.6. .6. So firstly, what we can see here is RTX 1490 in the top of the back. This is the overall score and extended score, but they've also included multiple 1490s. We've got two in here as well as three because the Vintage Resolve is very good at scaling. So what we're going to be also seeing in some of these charts here is the scaling performance and looking at certain workflows does it make sense to get multiple GPUs and how much performance you're going to gain? But in DaVinci Resolve, as you can see, having three does give you good performance and actual boost from just having one. But is it worth it? For most people, the answer is probably no. But in certain workflows, you'll see you can get very close to three times performance and that's going to be very beneficial for you then. Now, usually AMD GPUs here have been a little bit better in DaVinci Resolve in my desk bench uh, benchmarks what we released when we tested all of them but since the new version now come out and we can test different aspects you can see that this best of AMD 7900 XDX is about on par with the 4070 Ti Super. Interesting thing is the Ti Super is slightly cheaper or can be slightly cheaper than the 7900 XDX depending when you're watching. I'm going to leave all the GPUs in the description below as well if you want to check out the latest pricing or pick any of these up that shows that interestingly nvidia again is on the top now you can be a little bit confused with the different colors here because i think puget system should have gone amd this should have been red here and then intel should have been blue but for some reason everything apart from 1490 and 7900 xdx and intel are this turquoise green so bear in mind the colors might actually confuse you a little bit if you look at the last generation 6900 xd that performs roughly on par with the 2080 Ti, which is quite an old card. And in extended overall scores, the Intel Arc A770 absolutely flops, is slower than the 1080 Ti from whenever ago. And the 4060 and 4060 Ti are almost double the performance as A770 which is interesting. Now, Bougie Bench thinks that AMD and Nvidia got better optimization for the software, which Intel maybe not have done it, or the new benchmark version is a lot harder on the Intel cards than on the other ones, and perhaps that's why it's slower. But the fact of the fact is that Intel is the slowest in the bunch here. The card that actually sticks out to me is the 4070 Ti Super because that's basically a little bit of a cut down version of the 4080 Super that performs in here quite a bit better, but is quite a bit cheaper than the 4080 Super. As you can see, 4080 here, and you get 16 gigabytes of VRAM as well, 
which is very, very good for DaVinci Resolve. But the interesting twist here is that the AMD 7900 XDX actually has 24 gigabytes of VRAM. So if you're looking for a lot of VRAM, you might want to go with the 7900 XDX instead of the 4070 Ti Super because of the VRAM buffer extra eight gigabytes might be very helpful for you. Now let's keep going. Diving deeper, a little bit different parts of the benchmark. Firstly, Fusion, which is kind of like the after effects of DaVinci Resolve. And here we can see that the 4090 is, again, top of the chart. And it's quite a bit faster than the 4080 Super, as you can see there. Now to me, the 4070 Ti Super performs very, very close to the 4080 Super, which kind of starts to be the best bang for buck. Kind of an Nvidia GPU looks like the trend is coming up again. But what's interesting is that the best of AMD here is the same as 4070 Super from Nvidia at half of the VRAM buffer. And if you're running a 2080 Ti with 11 gigabytes from a while ago, you're still very, very good. You're performing exactly the same as the 7900 XDX or a few percent slower than the 4070. So perhaps you might not actually need the upgrade that you are looking for. Interestingly, when having multiple cards here, the scaling in Fusion doesn't work at all because two 4090s and three 4090s are further down in the pack. The 1080 Ti is actually faster than the Arc A770 in Fusion. So that kind of doesn't make sense. Again, if you're on Intel Arc, probably DaVinci Resolve right now isn't the best for you. But Intel's known for having very good updates for the drivers. So let's hope that they optimize their GPU a bit better to be closer to Nvidia and AMD. If you look at the actual multi-GPU scaling um, chart here now for this fusion, you can see that depending on the different effects or what you're trying to do, if you're doing turbulent particles, as you can see, having one 1490 is a lot better than having two or three. Having two or three just goes down in performance. Red chart here is one RTX 1490, the green is two and blue is three. Interestingly though, phone composite UHD, you can get 223% performance gain over the 1490. But having two cards only makes about 9-10% difference. So that's interesting. But most of the cases, having two or three cards, as you can see, the performance goes down. Performance goes down. But here, 3D lower third, everything's the same. But most of the time, the performance goes down. So Resolve can actually do quite a bit of optimization in Fusion part and actually optimize it a little bit better. Most likely your Fusion is actually limited by the CPU performance. So having a better CPU in Fusion might be a better idea than actually a better GPU. Having a 4090 is just the best. Now next up we have RAW scores and this is RAW extended. Here we can see having RAW, the two GPUs does give you boost and three gives you a little bit more boost. Now it doesn't scale quite as like two, three times the performance, but you can get a little bit more. When looking at the RAW now, suddenly the 7900 XDX is faster than the 4080 Super, which is roughly about the same price point, or actually probably a little bit more expensive these days. The 7900 XDX is only a little bit slower than the 4090. So depending which RAW you're using, AMD actually performs quite well in there. Interestingly, the 3080 Ti, from the last generation is performing slightly better than the 4080 Super. If you're running a 3000 series GPU, perhaps you don't actually need the new GPU because it doesn't make that much sense to you. Now we can see that the 4070 Ti is slightly slower than the 4080, as you can see there, but still kind of a good performance for the 16 gigabytes of VRAM. A little bit better, about 5% better than the 6900 XD. So if you're running a 6900 XD, as you can see, again, 4000 series NVIDIA GPUs might not make sense in a raw score here or processing raw codec. The 4070s here perform all within the same ballpark, a couple of percent of each other. So having a 4070 Super Ti or just a normal one really doesn't make that much difference. Intel Arc, unfortunately, again, lower of the pack there and the 1080 Ti performs about the same as 4060, which shows that kind of from 10 series of NVIDIA GPUs, we've gained quite a bit of performance. Looking a little bit deeper into the raw processing score, there's different types of raw that we're looking in the extended overall here, which is 8K Red, 4K Red, 4.6K B raw, Sony 5K raw, 4K Iry raw, and 4K Cinema raw light. 
as you can see, having multiple GPUs, 4K cinema, raw light, doesn't give you any performance gain. The same with 4K Red Raw and 8K Red Raw. Having multiple GPUs doesn't give you any performance boost. When looking at the B Raw, having two or three GPUs kind of performs the same, but going from one to two gives you extra 57% boost, which is insane boost. So if you're working with Blackmagic Raw, wouldn't go with three GPUs, but having two kind of makes sense here. Sony, 5K Raw, interestingly, having two GPUs only gives you 8% buffoons, but then from two to three, you get insane boosts in performance. The same with Arrow Raw. If you go in two or three, there's quite a good scaling up here. So depending on your workflow, which raw codec you're processing, it might make sense for GPU scaling, but for certain codecs, again, doesn't make any sense at all. Moving on to GPU effects, and now this is the open FX scores, and we can see how good are the different GPUs in processing these effects. Again, having two or three RTX 4090s here, huge performance boost, as you can see. Having three RTX 4090s is more than double the performance compared to the 1490, which is insane. And interestingly here, the multi-GPU scaling doesn't need an NVLink. It's just like plug the GPUs in and they talk to each other. Interestingly here for GPU effects, the 7900 XT performs slightly faster than the 4080 Super. 3080 Ti still holds its performance very, very well. And the 4070 Ti Super falls a little bit behind the 4080, but is actually faster than the 6900 XT and any of the 4070s, which are actually quite a bit further down compared to the 4070 Ti Super here. Again, Intel Arc is on the bottom there, but for GPU effects extended, is not far behind than the 4060 from Nvidia. As you can see, the different effects in multi-GPU scaling, certain effects give you quite a bit of performance. For example, Sharpen, when we go with three GPUs, it's very good scaling, 283% compared to just one. So that is very, very good scaling. And most of these effects here, as you can see, with three GPUs give over 200% increase if you have multiple GPUs. But it just depends like how much of these effects you actually work. But spatial noise reduction here might be something that you're doing quite a lot. So having multiple RTX 4090s kind of makes sense as well as film grain. So it's, it's up to you here now. The temporal noise reduction doesn't give you that much performance boost. I mean, three 4090s are still 36% better than one but not as much as having multiple there. And finally, the last bit, what we're looking here is the AI score. So finally now, Puget Bench has included some AI features of the Venture Resolve and different GPUs. So this is like the very new stats and benchmark scores of the AI because previously they haven't been tested. And there's some very interesting results. So having multiple GPUs on Nvidia actually kind of scales kind of well as well. Now the 4080 Super is doing very, very well. And from 3000 series 4080 Ti, as you can see, there's quite a bit of a boost there. I'd say the 4070 Ti Super, again, holds its ground there very, very well and is a considerable jump up from the 4070s here. Interestingly, the 4070 and 4060 Ti perform about the same. And this is the bad news from AMD here now. The Radeon 7900 XDX is slower than the 4060 Ti, as you can see in here, which is a little bit embarrassing. Only slightly better than the 2080 Ti from quite a while ago, but that shows that the 2080 Ti, so 3000 series and 2000 series Nvidia cards, aren't as good with the AI features as the 4000 series. But at the same time, the 3080 Ti is performing better than the 4080. So if you have a high end 3000 series card, it kind of makes sense, but 2000 series, not so much anymore. Intel Arc here is slightly faster than the 1080 Ti, but embarrassingly slow compared to the 6900 XT or 4060, which is very close to three times better. And when looking at the GPU scaling in certain AI features, we can see that DaVinci Resolve has some optimization still to do with different uh, effects or AI uh, actual features. Because you can see that if we're looking at the scene detection cut, they're kind of the same. A lot of these effects here on the top are about the same. But then at the same time, optical flow, if we go in 50% warp speed, 
Having three gives you double the performance. Having two doesn't give you anything. So not exactly like good scaling. Then there's a bunch of effects here again that don't give you that much performance boost. Then depth map, having two or three doesn't give you much of a performance increase. But at the same time, person mask gives you quite a big difference between two or three GPUs and having two GPUs is about 55% faster which is insane. Now face refinement and super scale having three GPUs gives you quite a bit of a performance boost and the scaling is quite good. Now from two to three obviously is a smaller jump between than the one to two but still having multiple GPUs in a lot of the AI effects does give you a better boost now you can definitely see that resolve has some improvements to do and actually can make it a little bit faster and optimize these neural engines on these nvidia 4000 series gpus a little bit better but we can see that if they do the results are pretty good so now in conclusion which are the best gpus for davinci resolve you can see that the nvidia 4000 series are actually in the lead if you're looking for just the best of the best the 4090 is the one for you and if you've got extra money to spend having multiple gpus depending on your workflow can give you a considerable boost but make sure that it does actually makes sense for your workflow because in some instances it doesn't now the amd 7900 xd performs kind of in the same ballpark as the 4080 super from nvidia but at the same time in the ai tasks falls massively behind so if you're doing any of the ai features or using the ai effects on davinci resolve the amd cards aren't as good that makes me wonder is it just the optimization or the way that the cards you know architectural structure works is not as good we know nvidia has been talking about ai for a long time so it's not a surprise that nvidia is the best the last player in the game intel it's unfortunate that intel is just not yet optimized and doesn't perform quite as well for the same price point as some of the other cards here from nvidia and amd for some people it might actually make sense to go with the 7900 xdx compared to the 4080 super because of the extra vram so if you need it amd might be the good option for you unless you do the ai effects then nvidia is a lot better but why are these results very important for you now we know that actually adobe uses ai for lightroom classic and some on photoshop now and perhaps very soon premiere pro and others bits as well that shows us that nvidia they are the ai you know hardware leader actually does perform quite a bit better than amd and intel meaning if you are using ai features in creative cloud as well we can speculate that nvidia is the good option for you for example lightroom classic if you're doing the ai denoise nvidia cards are probably better for you but we're gonna have to see that as well if you enjoyed this video hit that like button it actually makes a difference if you want to pick up this t-shirt i'll leave it in the description below as well and if you have any other questions i'll always get back to my minec messages thanks guys for watching and i'll see you soon bye bye